still quarantined, uh, but today, special guest is head coach at Appalachian State University, uh, Coach Smith. How are you? Doing great. How are you? I am doing well. Getting to talk to you guys, so I'm staying busy. How are you guys staying busy? Uh, we've got a. Uh... We've got plenty of stuff going on, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, my crew inside doing uh, doing school or whether it's uh, communicating with obviously our staff and our university and um, obviously our student athletes about, you know, kind of what's next and uh, where this whole thing's heading. So what is next? Where is this thing headed, this whole coronavirus? Uh, I think that's probably the million, million dollar question. Um, you know, I think it's, it's our job as, uh, you know, kind of the CEOs of our program to make sure that everybody's staying um, up to date and informed, you know, I think so much hits social media, um, you know, sometimes prior to us being able to communicate with our, our student athletes, most importantly, um, and just making sure we're kind of filtering through all that and giving them the real information, you know, what's fact, um, you know, we want to be the resource for them um, so that they know that, you know, when they hear it from us, that, that that's what's coming down the pipe. Um, so just, uh, you know, just, just being really thoughtful towards that and, you know, trying to be um, as transparent as we can be, trying to get them the information maybe before they hear it from a source that's not um, kind of given the whole truth or, or how it relates to college baseball, how it relates to Division One baseball, how it relates to Appalachian State University, and how it relates to our program specifically. Definitely a tough time for the whole country. That's great to stay ahead of it because everybody is on social media trying to find the answers these days. Um, I was supposed to come visit you guys uh, live in person for a college tour. Uh, this kind of backed it up, and I know that we were waiting for some improvements to be done to the field. You were working on some projects. Want to tell us about those projects that you guys were doing over there? Yeah, so the the uh, the easy ones, the the turf project that I, that kind of went viral um, there um, when we got that done, and you know, uh, once we got that done, you know, we just we just had a lot of things that we wanted to kind of complete before we got the full thing out there. We um, we we put up padded walls, so we replaced the the backstop padding um, on our fence, uh, redid our dugouts completely, dugout benches, dugout bat racks, helmet racks. Um, did some stuff in the indoor and, you know, just kind of branded the place and, you know, kind of brought some some history out the, of things that we've accomplished as a baseball program, you know, just, um, you know, putting on the outfield wall conference championships, regional championships, you know, being able to display some different guys that have made an impact on this program um, and just things that are specific to Appalachian State, you know, and things that are specific to our baseball program. We kind of redid our, our indoor batting cage uh, to make it a little bit more functional, um, you know, extended the cages so that we can uh, have a live pitcher and a live hitter going um, and be able to use all of the technology that we have. So um, able to put up some displays in there so that, you know, when we're pitching, we can kind of get our Rapsodo numbers, um, good feedback immediately, um, you know, we'll put up some monitors so that uh, our hit tracks information can get up immediately. Um, so, and you can do that all at once. So we can do, we can have everything that we need to have on, on a pitch and on a hit. Um, the only thing we can't get indoors is obviously the defensive side of it. So, um, but you know, with turf, it gives us that opportunity as well. So just kind of wanted that finished product before we got you guys up here and yeah. it kind of, uh, kind of bit us here. So uh, we're looking forward to getting you guys back up here though, and um, yeah, kind of we'll, showing you the finished product. Yeah, we'll get it done. Uh, those pictures were amazing. Those aerial pictures. I'm definitely, uh, getting it framed in my office. Yeah, well, we're, I, we're I used it. Yeah. I used it as the cover photo for every intro to the college tour. Uh, I saw that. Yeah, that was awesome. That was that was a good pub for us. So you um, you were at Lander for a while, brought them to College World Series, um, the winningest coach in that school's history, and then you got hired at App State in 2016. Uh, what is it that you you know did at Lander that you're trying to do at App State, or how are you going to kind of create that that winning culture at App State over time? Yeah, um, you know, it, it wasn't necessarily me. It was a lot of great people, you know, uh, my staff, starting with that. Um, you know, prior to Lander, um, uh, Belmont Abbey had a pretty good run there. Um, you know, really fortunate to work with their current head coach, Chris Anderson. Um, you know, and I think our blend of kind of how we wanted to build that program, you know, I think they're – 
you know, uh, the, the, those two programs are kind of what you would consider kind of blue collar programs where we're going to have to kind of work for what we get. Um, you know, the, not going to get necessarily your blue chip athlete, um, not going to be fully funded in scholarships. And, um, so you're, you're kind of, you know, you're, you're going to have to put a lot of your, um, chips in on, on development, you know, and making sure that you're getting the right kind of person and the right kind of player in your program. Um, uh, fortunate enough that, uh, he and his family kind of migrated down to Lander with us and helped kind of establish that program. Um, and then he got the head coaching job back at, at Bellman Abbey and um, really fortunate to have coach there at the time who's still with me, Britt Johnson. Um, and just kind of, you know, um, I think just, you know, it, it, you know, it takes a village, right? And, you know, I think the people that you start, you know, integrating yourself with and allowing their strengths to come out, uh, allowing your strengths to come out and helping improve each other's weaknesses, um, you know, and then the, the most important factor is just a lot of really good players that came in over those years uh, to, you know, benefit a program and, you know, th that buy-in factor of, you know, what they, uh, what they're coming to that university for and, um, you know, to get a great education to, to, to serve the community in that area um, and to just be all in on, on that athletic department and having a lot of pride in where they play. Um, you know, I think that that's probably the biggest thing, you know, our, our three kind of core values are to be the best son that you're capable of being, to be the best student you're capable of being, and be the best athlete that you're capable of becoming. And, you know, when you have, you know, 35 individuals that kind of come into an, an institution and completely buy into those three things, then, you know, a lot of things get accomplished. You're going to have a lot of uh, a lot of guys that are succeeding in the classroom, you know, on the end of that, you have a lot of guys get a lot of good degrees and are prepared to go into the job world. Um, you're going to have a lot of great people, you know, that are interacting, you know, I think the, you know, the thing that sometimes we miss and, you know, the service and all of that is they have an opportunity to serve each other every day. And when, when you got 35 guys in a locker room serving each other every day, you know, it creates a lot of really cool things. Guys that want to get out in the community and, and, and serve the community well. Guys that want to pour into each other uh, and, and, and improve each other. Um, and guys that are pouring into the coaching staff and the coaching staff's pouring into them. Um, you know, I think in that kind of full circle kind of creates that family atmosphere that we, we go after every day. And then obviously the competitive side of, you know, guys walking out onto the field, you know, while taking care of the stuff that they need to take care of off the field um, and pushing themselves to, to the limit. You know, when, when you put kind of, as I said, put all your chips in on the development mode or the development aspect, you know, you're not just talking about the field. You're talking about the batting cage after hours. You're talking about the weight room. You're talking about nutrition. You're talking about what time they're going to sleep every night and balancing their schoolwork, community service, and, and what they're doing on the baseball field. So I think that, you know, that it's I could probably talk about this for hours, but I think the, the, the people that you're working with every day, your coaching staff, um, and we're really fortunate to have, you know, two other good ones along with me and Britt here and Justin Aspergen and Eric Lundy and just two rising stars in the profession. And um, just really fortunate that, you know, that they've kind of come in. Eric played for me at Lander, so he kind of had, you know, that background a little bit, but just really fortunate to have four people kind of, you know, pulling in the same direction every single day. Um, and I think that that pours over into your students and athletes and then you know the the second they become empowered um that that thing really starts taking off so um you know again that's uh you asked specifically me i don't think it's uh, i'm just a small part of it but I'm, I'm fortunate to have worked with a lot of really good people and fortunate to have had a lot of really good players come along those those years so for you you're obviously um, looking for a specific kind of player and a specific kind of assistant coach uh, where everything gels together um, and those players, as you say, buy into the program. What kind of characteristics in a young, you know, recruit are you looking for, like, that you key in on? Because obviously there's only so much time to, to communicate with them and watch them play, um, and you can't, you can't get a full picture of who they are as a person. So what are some of those, you know, tells for you? Yeah, um, you know the the obvious one is is talent. You want to see a kid who can who can play and has a couple of tools. Um, but you know, I think the thing that we've always said is just that they're a good baseball player. And I know that's that's pretty open ended. Um, but you, I don't want to get so caught up in you know a specific metric or a specific sixty time or a specific this or a specific that that we forget just the fact that you know he can put a barrel on a baseball and you know he can track down a ball in the outfield or he can you know really range it out at shortstop or he can catch and throw a ground ball or I can, I can really pitch and and obviously there's a there's a break-even point you know you, you can't just have a bunch of quote-unquote really good kids on your team but um you know I think that you know if you're willing to 
to fight and have your standard high enough, I think that you can, you know, accomplish what you're setting out to, to have a talented team that's really good at baseball and, you know, has that service mentality, you know, and that servant mentality that they do want to achieve great things in the classroom and achieve great things on the field. And um, the biggest thing for us um, is maybe not necessarily what we're um, able to identify, but through the recruiting process is we're just very honest um, as we're going to sit them down and, you know, each guy's going to go one-on-one -on -one with me um, and we're going to sit down and, and talk about all the factors that go into our program and, and how hard we are going to work and the expectations that we do have for them in those three areas that we just, that I've dis discussed at length. Um, and I think that through that process. Um, obviously, once they get to our campus, we've done a, a great deal of homework on character and different things like that. But once they get to that part right there, is, a, is, is if they don't fit, they just don't fit. And we don't try to force it. Um, we're not going to keep going and keep going. And, you know, I think a lot of times those, you know, when you get a kid on campus and they start integrating themselves with our players, um, you see really quickly if, if it's going to work or if it's not. And, you know, we listen to our guys a lot, you know, on those official visits and for, for guys that are going to work and not going to work. And, um, you know, we just, we, we want that personality to fit. And, um, you know, I think anytime you're, 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 you're talking about that family word. Um, and I know you asked me about, uh, identifying a player but I think it's important but anytime you're you're talking about that family where you're 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 giving yourself the opportunity that you know families don't always get along um but families do respect one another and families do you know enjoy each other and uh, you know so I think there's a sense of humor there I think that there's uh you know being able to integrate with somebody's family you know my 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 family Rebecca and the kids are going to be very present uh Britt's family Justin's family uh Eric's family we're, we're going to be there's going to be a lot of people on, on the field after a game um and they're going to know who our wives are and they're going to know who our kids are and I think that through that when you're honest with that on the front end is people are looking for that or they're not um so I think that that's all the all of those intangibles and all of those standards that you're holding them to um you know, we'd like to say that we identify all those qualities, but I think those qualities just kind of find out, have a way of working themselves out um, just through us on the front end, just being very transparent in, in what we're asking them to do or what we're going to ask from them when they get to campus. You talk about uh, family and one of the things that I wanted you to provide is some insight into the challenges of being a head coach. And I guess we'll kind of start there when you, when you're a coach of any kind or a teacher. I mean, there's lots of professions out there where you give up time with your own family to help other families. Um, you know, how do you balance the two? Yeah, uh, I think that you could eliminate the head word there and head coach. I think just coaching um, in general is um, very taxing and very investing in, in other families. And I guess I can really only speak to um, how I do it and how we do it here um, and the things that I see my assistants do and the things that, you know, we try to do intentionally. Uh, number one is Rebecca is uh, amazing at it. I, I think that, you know, your partner and your, and your wife has to, um, you know, it's, it's not that they're accepting this way of life. It's, it's, it's really that, you know, she's, she looks at this as much of, as a mission field as I do. Um, so her, um, she looks at it as what she gets to do, not what she has to do. Um, but just the simple things like, you know, being at games and then after the game coming down on the field, making sure that our kids are there. Um, if she can get the kids, uh, you know, from school and we're still practicing that day and it kind of lines up that they don't have any, you know, family activities that afternoon just to, you know, pop up to the field and just as the guys are leaving the field that day, just kind of be there, um, you know, be present. Um, you know, there, there was a, you know, I think we had a road trip this year where she baked some cookies and kind of had them for me to pass out throughout the throughout the charter bus at the end of the game. When we got done down in Greensboro on game three, um, and it happened to be a 15 inning game, so it was even cookies tasted even better. Well, what um, kind of cookies were they? Uh, there was a mixture. There was a mixture. So we had some chocolate chips, some yeah, oatmeal raisin. Good, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and I think you know, just the guys kind of seeing that. I think that it, you know, it gives them freedom towards um, seeing some other stuff, and you know, feeling a little bit more comfortable when she's around and. Uh, you know, I, from time to time, I'll see, you know, her interacting with, with players on social media um, for things that, you know, kind of, you know, whether it's a really good play by a player that, you know, 
we we put out that uh hey you know that w- what a play by so and so today and she'll comment on it and just you know say something kind about the player and you know i think that just the more that we're integrating um and and being present and being there um you know and and then then i think you just you talk about all the stuff where um I, can't exactly remember how you phrased it, but just when they're going through life, right? When they're when they're having something that that they come across, and just uh, being present uh, to, um, you know, not just me uh, dealing with them and what they've got going on back home, or you know, a death in the family, or a tough time in the classroom, or getting overwhelmed with their first year of college, or what have you. Um, but just um, every time I leave, and she knows that I'm going to deal with something, she'll just say, "Hey, you know, make sure that they know that." you know, they've got my contact information and, and they can reach out to me if they have, if they need to talk or anything like that. And I think that, you know, even if they never take her up on it, um, the fact that, you know, number one, she's saying that to me. And number two is um, I, I say that to the player uh, th- that makes an impact, you know, just to be, um, you know, I think a lot of times we forget that, you know, they're, they're still 17 to 22, you know, they're, they're, they're still young um, and they go through a lot and they're they're They have a lot that's asked of them and it is a blessing to be able to play, you know, college athletics, but at the same time, they're still balancing school. They're still balancing life back home. They're still balancing, you know, trying to be the best player they can be and, and all those things. And, um, you know, uh, it, it's, you know, I believe in, family for a lot of things but I think the the biggest thing for that is just you know as you're trying to make an impact on young people um you know I think that that's uh that that's kind of my way that's the Smith way I guess so um yeah I'm I'm very blessed to you know uh have Rebecca in my life and you know and our kids love our players um and that they're their you know they're their heroes you know and they get to go out every day and kind of you know, to watch my son swing in the batting cage and he's doing, you know, somebody, one of my players stances or different things like that. I think, uh, well, I've got a, my daughter's six, um, and she, she loves all those boys. Um, uh, my, my, my middle child is Beckett, who is, uh, 10 years old. And my oldest son is uh, Maddox at 12 years old. Um, right, so I got to ask where the name Maddox and the name Beckett came from. Uh, just, you know, just kind of baseball theme names, you know, okay. you're, you're going down that list, uh, you know, when you, when you find out you're pregnant and, uh, you're going down that list with, you know, your significant other and, uh, <laughs> you know, you no, no, no. Oh, wait, that's, that's, that's got some baseball ring to it. So, you know, you're just, uh, and my daughter's name is Georgia, and she's named after my father, whose name was George. Um, and they actually have the same birthday, so pretty cool, uh, pretty cool story there. I hear back, and I think back to the days of going through all of my cards each month and looking in the the back yeah, at what that's right. the card worth. And then we got Josh Beckett also. I mean, there's quite a few there. Um, yeah, that's right. So it's pretty clear family atmosphere uh, at App State, which is awesome. Um, and, and I can hear you want to take the word head out of a head coach term, but you are the head coach. You are the leader of the program. Um, what, what kind of challenges arise for you? Or what would you say are some of the more difficult things that you have to deal with as the head coach of a division one program? Oh man. Um, I, I, I don't really know that, uh, there's, there's one thing necessarily. Um, I think you're just balancing, um, uh, you know, is equally as difficult at, you know, um, at Lander and at Belmont Abbey. You know, I think that any time that you're managing people, you know, and any time that you're managing, you know, finances and scholarship money and, um, you know, who gets what and where do we balance this and where do we balance that? And, you know, where is this meal coming from? And where is, you know, what hotel are we staying in and rooming lists and all those different things. I think that, you know, whenever you're, 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 balancing money and balancing people and balancing problems. Um, I think that, you know, in every issue that could come out of that, I think would be the challenges. You know, I think the, the ones that, um, I guess you would, you would say you lose sleep about is just, you know, when a kid's going through a tough time, um, that's, that's the time for me that, you know, you're, you want to be really careful in you know, the words that you're using, you want to be really careful in the advice that you're giving. You want to, um, you know, make sure that they know that you're, you're there, but you also don't want to step into an area that, you know, they don't want you in and give them the privacy that they, that they need when they're going through a situation. So, um, you know, the, those, those, those personal problems with, with your players, 
Um, those are the tough ones because you, you want to be everything to everybody. You really do. You want to be there for your staff. You want to be there for your family. You want to be there for your players. And I think that, you know, when, when they start going through that hard time, um, you know, it, it really uh, it gives you that, that perspective on what you're building your relationship on. Um, so I think that when you're, when you're in that mode, um, that's, that's the biggest challenge when it, when it, as it relates to our roster and, you know, our budget and all those different things. And I think the other one is just trying to make sure you're balancing your, your work life and your home life. Um, I always use the analogy of a backpack and making sure that, you know, if your work is your backpack to take your, take that backpack off every day when you get home. And, um, you know, when you, when you walk into the, into your house, making sure that you're not, you know, you're not coach Smith anymore, um, making sure that you're, you're, you're the dad and you're the husband. Um, and, you know, looking people in the eye, making good eye contact, making sure the phone's put up or on silent and, um, you know, giving everything you've got. Cause by the time you get home, you really don't have that long. You know, you've probably got 45 minutes to two hours with your kids before bedtime. Um, you know, some of that's homework, some of that's, uh, things that they want to do and the, some of that's things they have to do. And then, you know, obviously you're, you're trying to connect with your wife, um, which makes the whole thing go. And, um, that's, uh, those are the challenges there, um, is just making sure that you're present and making sure that you've, um, as I referenced, you've taken your backpack off for the day. You talk about, the, um, the difficult times and helping players through difficult times this is an unprecedented time in the world uh with with the coronavirus um obviously there's still a lot of questions that need to be answered and those answers are coming down the road um but can you tell us give give us some insight as to how did you help your players i mean it must have been one of the most difficult things of your career to deal with, with a group of players when they found out, you know, how this season was going to end? Yeah. Um, so the day that the, um, the day that it came out that the NCAA was canceling the college world series, we were supposed to be, um, we we're supposed to be heading to Texas state to play a weekend series um, for our opening Sunbelt play. And, um, you know, it hit social media prior to me being able to be face to face with my team and kind of in that window of when the NCAA released it, our, the Sunbelt, um, our conference released a statement that we were suspending play, but obviously that there wouldn't be a college world series, that there would only be hope for, you know, a conference championship, but I, you know, the writing's on the wall at that point, you know, and so honestly, we just had a team meeting. Uh, I talked about the facts, you know, that, you know, where the college world series was, that it was canceled. Uh, regional, super regionals canceled. Uh, Some about play was suspended. Um, had no idea what that was going to look like if it was <laughs> unsuspended. You know, does that mean we play the remainder of our schedule? We everybody goes comfort. I don't. I don't know. You know. So just being really again transparent in that, and um, you know, just taking that moment. And even though we didn't know it was over, over, uh, but just taking that moment to try and uh, you know let the seniors know how I felt about them. And um, you know, that's. Uh, you know, I won't get too much further into that because that's pretty emotional. But, um, you know, just that that that's just uh, you have no preparation for that. That's, um, you know, you want to talk about perspective on what you're building your program on. Um, that's it right there. You're at you're at a crossroads where, you know, whether you you were putting off something you wanted to say to a senior before he graduated or if you wanted to let them know how proud you were of them. Um, or any player for that for that instance, you know, and you know the perspective we talked about real briefly because we wanted to make it about the seniors is just, you know, to never leave any regret out there. You know, it's just you know, hey, like it's your last day on a baseball field because you don't know when your last one's going to be, and that the ultimate perspective right there of just, um, and you can relate that to life as well. You know, just the uh, maybe that one comment I wanted to walk up to a senior and tell them, or you know, that one comment that. You know, I could have said to a sophomore about effort level or, you know, what they're doing here, or how proud I was of them. And it, you can, you know, run the, the uh, gamut on those conversations. But, you know, just that perspective, it's going to hit you in the face that, man, like it's your last day on a baseball field. You know, this that we, we played our last game um, 
as this team as we know it, we we won't ever take the field again. Um, and that's a that's a perspective that's man, you, you're nobody's ready for. Um, and uh, I don't know that I said the right things, but I sure hope I did. Um, I, I, I know my guys well enough to know that they know where I'm coming from on all that. And, um, and I know where they're coming from on all that. And they're, they're great kids. And, you know, just thinking about not being on coach those seniors again is really, really difficult. Um, and um, I, know, I know it's ultimately as difficult for them to think about not playing again. Right. Well, I am uh, sure you said the right things. You are a first class stand up guy. Uh, I am I'm honored that you came here and talked about all this uh, with me. So thank you for that. I wish you and your family the best. Be safe during these times and can't wait to get back to baseball soon. Yeah, absolutely. We look forward to having you in Boone, too. Thanks for doing this. This is, uh, this is a really good resource for everybody out there to kind of, you know, as we're, you know, as you've stated a couple of times, we're in unprecedented times and, you know, uh, videos like this and information that we can get out. And just to know that, you know, this this whole community um, is we're all in this together. You know, nobody's experiencing something that the other one's not. And we're all on an equal playing field on this. And we just obviously need to support each other and be there for the people that we're supposed to be there for.